Let's welcome in Jeff Pierce. He's Senior Manager of Derivatives of Trading at Charles Schwab. Jeff, we want to focus on the car companies. We know that the latest delivery numbers are coming out for Tesla. They've not already come out. Have they come out? And what do you have to report to us now? Yes, Tesla has released their numbers. We're seeing the stock down just over 2% after they came up shy of expectations. On the delivery side for Q3, Tesla came in at 435,059 vehicles. That's down from the Q2, 466,000. So down about 31,000 vehicles altogether. Total production for Q3 came in at 430,488. That's down about 49,000 from what we saw in Q2. Now, some of this was expected. The, the decline we're seeing here is in part because they had uh, shut down some factories, which they let us know they were gonna do. They're, they they did, did that in preparation for the updated Model 3 and the Cybertruck. Mm -hmm. uh, if we look at some of the past delivery numbers from last year, we're certainly up year over year. And the company said, in terms of their target to deliver 1.8 million vehicles in 2023, they are still on track to do that. Still on track to do that. And you noted that they did have to shut down those factories we're looking at. Did they actually shut down the Austin and Berlin factories during the time, or was it a system-wide shutdown? Yes, those, those are the two factories that they pointed to for shutdown in order to get them prepared for the new vehicles. Um, we've also, of course, you know, in, in terms of the deliveries numbers, we've seen Tesla really cut prices over the last year several times. The market in terms of EVs has been very competitive. There have been some investors out there and analysts that have questioned some of these price cuts, but Tesla's pointed to it really driving demand. They've also, you know, been able to uh, make these cars uh, available to those federal tax credits that we see that tends to drive some of that that demand out there. Earnings are coming in uh, October on the, on the 18th after the bell. I think we're going to hear a lot more about this information on that day. For sure. You know what I always wonder, Jeff, if Tesla has created difficult comparisons for itself by having that ramp up in production and then next year it may be a different story. What do you think about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's been a tough year. I mean, if you look at some of the some of the numbers we've seen, Tesla's Q2 revenue, 24.9 billion, that's up 47% year over year. That growth certainly has looked impressive, but it's been a slowdown from what they've seen. In 2021, they saw sales jump 71%. In 2022, they saw them up 51%. So these macroeconomic headwinds, higher interest rates specifically, are certainly putting pressure on, on these companies. And then being able to cut price is a strength but it also has made this uh, this market very tough for in the EV market. Their, their, their margins are a lot slimmer. Operating margin fell from 14.6% to 9.6% uh, in, in the last uh, report. And that was a lot to do with those prices getting better. You also wonder if the demand is actually still strong for Tesla. Now, we understand what production and deliveries look like, but are people actually wanting more of these vehicles as we go along, or is it a build them and they'll come sort of uh, sales strategy? Yeah, I think the volume and the demand has, has stayed relatively strong in the face of a lot of these, these interest rate uh, headwinds, as, as well as some of the, the inflation headwinds we've seen out there. Um, but it is certainly becoming a tougher market, not just because of some of the macroeconomics uh, out there, but also because of China and and the you know the big EV names they have there. Certainly in the U.S. as well, we have some some strong EV names. We've seen some of the big players out there switching over to EV, really putting a lot of money into it. Tesla has stayed strong as one of the leaders in this area, uh, but the pressure is mounting, and certainly demand is is strong for EVs. That still remains the same that the man is starting to really fan out among the, the many names that we're seeing hit the EV market. I'm glad you brought up China because China car makers also reported their numbers today. What did they come to? Yeah, we're seeing several of those big EV uh, names reporting large increases in China. Neo, let's start there. Um, they've got September deliveries, which rose 43.8%, starting uh, coming to 15 uh, 15,641, excuse me. If we look at the breakdown there, about 11,500 SUVs, just over 4,100 sedans. Q3 deliveries up 75.4%. Here coming in at 55,432. We look at total deliveries now for NEO. They've now reached about 399,549 vehicles. Let's look at XPing as well. This is uh, the stock that's really shinier to date, up about 81% coming into today. September deliveries rose 81% year over year, coming in at 15,310. Uh, the, the, the G6 deliveries hit about 8,132 in September. For total Q3, 
Those deliveries rose 72% quarter over quarter, coming in at 40,008 cars. And then finally, we've got Lee Auto. This has been one of the, the companies that's really, really shined in terms of delivery numbers. In fact, they just said that they're China's first new ener energy automaker to reach a milestone of 500,000 vehicles. In Q3, they delivered uh, 105,108. That was up almost 300% year over year. So Lee Auto is becoming some really tough competition for Tesla. Yes, absolutely. I mean, if we're looking at some of the numbers out here, their sales have grown substantially more than I think a lot of people anticipated out there. If you look at September deliveries up 212% coming in at 36,060, that's a new monthly record for the company. Um, and, you know, if we look at the reports, I mean, the company has been doing relatively well. I mean, you know, earnings per share, they, it was a loss, but came in at 45 cents versus the 36 cent loss expected last time. Revenue, 1.21 billion. That's down 22% year over year, but still, um, you know, the numbers have, have come in well. There is a lot of pressure on the pricing as well, and that's what we're seeing across a lot of these companies. Absolutely, pressure on pricing, pressure on upping those delivery numbers as well. And let's look at Rivian, however, because Rivian received an upgrade this morning. So tell us about that. Yeah, Evercore ISI uh, put Rivian at outperformed from in line with the price target at 35 up to 30. They talked a lot about whether or not they're kind of the next Tesla. Is that the question out there? And the analyst doesn't really care for that question, but they do see some similarities that they have made between Tesla and BYD. Uh, you know, in, 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 in this context, the firm thinks that outside of Tesla and BYD, Rivian is the only OEM showing increased evidence of meeting all three criteria. Some of what they're looking at, they're focusing on their, their brand velocity of the R1S and the R2 to further ex expand with an SUV and path to 15 to 20% gross margin. They also said that they've executed on both cost and delivery targets. Um, and and they, they're looking forward to seeing a solid production and delivery to be reported in Q3. Those numbers are out, by the way. Q3, Caribbean produced 16,304 vehicles. That's up from 13,992 in Q2. They also delivered, uh, deliveries were also up 23% quarter over quarter, coming in at 15,564. It looks like it might, I mean, in your opinion, do you think that is the next Tesla or are you looking at Lee Auto or any of the others? Yeah, this is a tough one because uh, Rivian has certainly had a lot of issues. I mean, they are hitting targets now. They expect to hit their full year target of 52,000. They only need to, to do about 12,300 vehicles in the next quarter to, to reach that. Um, you know, they raised that guidance back in August after some of the supply chain issues had started to ease. And that was a big issue for the company. Supply chain uh, really put pressure on Rivian in a way that we didn't see across some of the other EVs. Um, they also improved their EBITDA guidance too, 4.3 uh, billion uh, instead of a loss of 4.2 billion. Um, so the numbers have looked okay, but this, this they have had a lot of struggles. I would say the, the supply chain issues and inflation hit Rivian uh, pretty hard over the last couple of years. Okay.